Hi, I'm Madeline Hammond, and I'll be doing a series of Zoom classes on the best way to put together your resume. Our first guest is Danny Tickton Koplick, who is founder and CEO of DTK Resources. She previously was in our industry before she became an executive coach and a leadership consultant. She worked um, at one of the studios doing advertising, publicity, and research. And I really welcome her perspective on the best way to get a job in today's very competitive marketplace. So all the way from New York, we're pleased to have Danny with us and let's get started. So Danny, I wanna start and talk about, let's talk about right now in this time of great uncertainty and every day on the news, it talks about these unemployment figures being just staggeringly high. So what's being that you um, work coaching people and you are a leadership consultant, what kind of advice can you give us about overcoming any fear or uncertain or in this time of uncertainty so we can get motivated to get a new job? What's something you can tell us to just say, stop reading, stop listening so much and just do it? Yeah, it, it is a complicated time and actually it it asks us to hold two almost seemingly opposite things in our brain at the, at the same time. One is we do have to understand what the reality of the situation is, but we also have to remain optimistic. They actually have a name for it. It's called the Stockdale Paradox. So, you know, optimism is, is uh, more long range. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a global kind of feeling, but you, you, we can't um, immunize ourselves, so to speak, against the news. We can turn it off, we can curate it, um, but some of the stuff to eliminate fear requires extreme self-care as opposed to trying to get ourselves thinking in a different way. So if you feel like you are losing it a little bit, eat, eat better, sleep more, stay hydrated, exercise a little bit and try to find some quiet times where you can just chill because your brain needs to recover from all this stimulus. So that's, you know, fear, fear is an emotion that exists in our brain and it's, it's ancient. It, it comes from needing to survive in the, in the wild and it was useful there. But what happens is our bodies and our brain interpret the threat as real physical threat. Well, I yeah. think fear I also think fear can be a great motivator. It can be. Right, it can be a great motivator. So to that end, why are resumes so important? Are they more important now than ever before? Do you think, Danny? And if so, why? I think they're very, very important. What's, what's important about them for right now is that I think they get you to focus on what your real skills are and how you're going to meet the requirements of what this new whatever. I, it's hard to say new normal because it's going to always be in flux. Right. It won't be normal. Uh, it won't be normal. It'll be the next something. But industry is going, you know, there are a lot of, there's a lot of talk now about upskilling, um, you know, make sure, just sort of read some stuff about what, what's happening in business and what skills and qualities they need. And mostly, I think, you know, if, if many of your people are in the arts or film or whatever, Creativity and innovation are huge. So to the degree that you can stress those qualities about yourselves, you know, I think that I think that, that can be really important and and something that just you get to avoid the cliches of, you know, I did this and then I contributed to that and I'm a team player and yada yada, but you know, try to express how maybe you solved problems. This is all about innovative ways to solve problems. Right. And so that's how I'm thinking about what a resume can do for you. And as, as I said earlier, you know, you have one chance to make a first impression. So mm -hmm. that's why you want this resume to be sort of airtight. Um, but that said, you do want to customize it for each job application because there are going to be different requirements. But pay very close attention to the skills that are needed and see how you can uh, morph what you know and do into what's required now. So Danny, you said a lot in that. So I want to go back and, and zero in on a couple things. <clears throat> First, cliches. Yes, I agree. Don't try to be cutesy, funny. I always say when I advise people, just the facts, ma'am. Just give me a, a chronology of facts because I will make my own interpretations. I don't need to see a lot of adjectives that you that the person says about themselves you know, team player, strong work ethic, great communication skills. 
I will come to that conclusion. But I, I need that chronology of, of what you've done so that I can see if you're a good fit. So right. agree on that? Okay. Oh, totally, totally. And then also I want to go, I want to mention something about, uh, I've seen this before where someone will say, I did this or I'm a this, I'm a that. No first person, just to underscore that. And something else I've seen in a few resumes I've just done is because we're in the, in the entertainment industry, some people have a tendency to say, I worked for, um, uh, I worked for Toby Emmerich. You know, I always say, please, no actual names. You could say I worked for the head of the studio or I worked with top talent, including such and such. Right. But I usually advise people, um, or I do advise people, to try to stay away from first names. It's okay to mention talent with respect to the projects you worked on, but not um, studio execs. It's a, it's, you know, it's an interesting challenge to use this as a marketing tool without seeming like you're selling. Exactly. Right, and I so the, the naming names is showing off, you know, putting in other kinds of cliches. It, it will irritate the person reading it. In addition to which, you know, the first screen for most of resumes these days is by a computer. So it's really, you know, all that fluff is only going to confuse, it's not going to be, the computer can't interpret stuff, you know, because there's no inflection, there's, you know, nothing like that. So um, stay away from emotional things, stay away from trying to be funny. As you said, the facts, just the facts. Right. Uh, um, yeah. That's and, why the computer is looking for key words. That's right. why I would recommend at the top, instead of those long sentences or summary paragraphs that no one reads, including the computer, just use some key words. And then the way you describe yourself in four or five words is gonna let the person reading it know exactly where you are. Because, exactly. Yeah, I think that's great. I just and then add, I, excuse me, I just wanna add one tip about the keyword. <laughs> the best way to come up with the, the most targeted keywords is to pull them from the job description so that you know exactly what they're looking for and you can drop those into the resume. You know, it, it'll say, it, it'll tell you what kind of qualities they're looking for, from, for, from someone. And so the more you can include those keywords, uh, you know, not, not verbatim, but it, it can help the computer match up. Got it. Now, I also wanna um, just go back to something you said, very important. I was always of the opinion but maybe I um, will change that now in light of the times that we're in, that you don't need to necessarily customize your resume and have like six resumes and change it for every single job that you're applying, but have one great resume that really tells your story. However, in light of the times and some of the people that I know who are on this call, some of them may feel the need to pivot. It may be, they may have, it may be that what they've done for many years is just not, um, there's not that many jobs out there for them right now. Or they may, like I feel if there's something else you wanna do that's adjacent to what you've done, this would be a great time to explore that. Do you agree? I do agree, I do agree. And you know, sometimes there are gifts in these, in these horrible catastrophes and it gives us an opportunity to pivot, um, you know, for separation from whatever you've been doing before allows you to think a little bit differently. And, you know, look, it's an opportunity to pursue something that may have been a dream or to think more creatively about how your talent can apply to an actual need. So I do think it's great to pivot. And okay. in that case, you, you know, when I say customize it, I don't mean change the body of the thing. Maybe the keywords change. Maybe whatever statement you're making. Somewhere. Cover letter. Oh, the cover letter is huge. The cover yeah. letter is huge. And then let's talk for a sec about cover letters. I'm of the opinion that short and sweet to the point, you do not need to reiterate every single thing that's in the attached resume. Would you agree? I would make it, I would say it more strongly. Um, it will turn people off if all mm -hmm. you're doing is regurgitating what's in your, in your resume. What they want to know is what value are you going to bring to this job or to this company? And right. again, no me, my's or myself's. It's about, it's not about you, it's not about telling your story, it's about how you can provide a solution to whatever gap they're sensing or whatever need they have. And what is the value you're gonna bring day one? What I do wanna add, and just to, I just remembered, when, when I counsel people on cover letters, 
I have to, I make sure that they end with a call to action at the end. You can't just say sincerely, Danny Ticton Cop, like say, I just want to say how much I'm interested in this job. And I will, at, uh, with your permission, I will follow up in a week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. And so that gives them a sense, A, that you really want the job. Right. B, that you're being, um, <clears throat> you know, you're being assertive about lending it. So I think that's important. And then I want to add one more thing to that. It's very important that the cover letter not look like you just, it, it, the opposite, it, there's, there's two extremes. One is you regurgitate, you're being cutesy, you know, funny and trying all that, that's bad. The other bad thing on the other end of the spectrum, if it, it looks like it's the same cover letter that you've just sent 10 people. Correct. Yeah. Yes, Not that's where the job description or the, the company or the industry is really important. If you're thinking about pivoting, you may be able to take your marketing skills to any number of industries. Right. So just make sure you are intimately aware of what that company does, what their needs are, where their gaps may be, what's going on in the industry if you're pivoting, because you know selling yourself is, is not working anymore. It's how are you going to be able to serve the company that you get hired by. And that's what they want to know. Everybody wants to see innovation and solutions. And you know, hopefully a lot of that will grow out of this time. Right, got it. Um, all right, let's talk about social networking. Um, sure. how important it is, how important it is to develop, and by social networking, I mean an individual's contacts. They're the people that they communicate with on a regular basis and how important it is to cultivate those relationships. And um, because I feel, and I uh, would in be interested in your opinion on this, that that is the best way to get a job, to be referred to, because if you don't know what's going on, people in your circle will. And I think it's extremely important. You it is. It is. Well, of course, at entry level, it's not quite the same thing. But as your mid-career and above, I would say it's the only way. You're, you know, job boards are probably overwhelmed. They probably even shut down because they're so overwhelmed. So clearly, if you have a personal introduction, um, it, it's very important. What I will say is that, yes, it's important to do that now. But once you land your job, and we know you all will, you must maintain those contacts because the best time to network is when you don't need anything. Yeah, being generous. Maybe you, you can be of help to them. Exactly, make referrals. Right. If it's not right for you, you can help someone in another way, but your network is really important. And actually I changed the metaphor a little bit. Instead of calling it a network, which is so broad that it sometimes has no depth, I yeah. talk in terms of a sphere of influence which because everybody is an offshoot of you and then everyone there is an offshoot of the, so I look at it as a solar system, right? You're the center as the sun sure. and then your contacts to the planets and then they have moons and everything else. A net is just broad and one dimensional, but when you get a solar system, there's like a gravitational pull. There's a reason why everybody is connected. Correct. And you know, and you look through your random cards in your desk drawer, that's not the same as having a real right. connection. Or going on LinkedIn and just like clicking people who you don't even know. To me, I think LinkedIn is a great, a very valuable tool. And certainly you should have an up-to-date resume on there, most importantly. Um, but it's important that you link with people that you know. You don't have to just accept everybody. I, don't, I think it defeats the purpose. Agree? If any of you have um, opinions and or are good writers, it's very helpful to, to help your SEO. And if you start blogging or posting or guest posting on somebody else's blog, start to get some traffic around your name, I think is, is also very helpful. Right, and agreed. Post it on LinkedIn. And then there's, a, uh, there's something other than your name that right. people would be interested in investigating. Um, <clears throat> by the way, I have to go back to the cover letter. Excuse me, sure. I just remembered one last thing. Uh, what do you prefer? because I have an opinion, I want to know what you think. Dear sir or madam, to whom it may concern, dear Ms. Coplick, dear Dan. I would go for the formal Ms. Coplick. Um, and, uh, you know, I've seen some that are just hideous, dear hiring manager. It's oh, like, I know. no time to yeah. investigate the company. Right. right. And to me, that would be an automatic off the pile. The idea is to stay on the pile. Yeah. And totally. if you 
and but you have to be respectful so i would never do first name but i would do miss mrs ms mix whatever you what you want to put on there okay great just want to make sure i agree with you and then lastly is when we were talking about your social network i want to emphasize this and be extremely clear this does not mean that <clears throat> excuse me that you should reach out to everyone that you know and say oh i was just furloughed i'm looking for a job it's a turn off when you say to people let me know if you hear of anything because people are already freaking out about their own situation, even if they are working. So I would much rather see you reach out to your social network with a sincere, authentic message of just checking in to see how you're doing. You know, just so you know, I was furloughed. I hope I get my job back. But if you need me in the interim, here's my personal email. That's all you need to say. One, one tip I find very helpful that I sort of thought about was connect with your alumni networks because anybody who is listed on there is there voluntarily to accept calls from other people who are looking for jobs or looking for advice. And it's perfectly acceptable to go online to your alumni, high school, college, grad school, whatever it is, and ask for an informational interview or something. They're there to help. So it's pre-sold in a way. You're not going randomly. So I, I find that to be a very useful thing. Good, I agree. Also during this time where you might have a little bit of extra time, I think it's a great time, I did this, um, to update your database. It's amazing how many people you've collected along the way that maybe you don't remember or are no longer there, but it also reminds you about this incredible wealth of friends that you may have that you've forgotten about. So I would say please update your database and, and clean up any of your social media sites because Danny, tell me if you agree, totally. they look at these. And they really do. LinkedIn. It's one of my notes. It's one of my notes. Make sure you purge your sites of anything that could be interpreted in the wrong way. Like no right. bikini shots and stuff like that. Keep it very yeah. on the up and up. I always say um, spring break at, uh, in Mexico. It's got to go. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. Also during this time of where people are so uh, vocal about politics, if there's anybody that is on your Facebook that has friended you that you, for whatever reason, have decided that they no longer, you know, want you want in your circle, remember that Facebook, LinkedIn, everything, all Instagram, they all reflect you. So you can actually unfriend someone on Facebook. They don't even know it. You should do it when you're cleaning your stuff out. I just agree. Wanna be I, think Agreed. I have two things that I want to make sure I mention. One is, you know, the way you say that people don't read quotation marks, but they, you know, they would read the bold or whatever. I feel the same way about certain filler uh, words like and. Um, if I'm going to put and in my resume, I always put an ampersand instead. It wastes time for your eye to have to read and. So I do an, an ampersand and I use a lot of semicolons so that I don't have to use full sentences. And I agree without the, the period at the end and all that. The other right, thing right. is, oh, yeah. Hold that thought one sec. Yeah. Do that very same thought. Um, I don't like when people say, I worked on projects such as, say, including, such as infers right. that it wasn't the project, it's something like that. Exactly. Right. In, in grammar, it's called a gerund, and the ing word is really great. It cuts out a lot of other words oh. that are nonsense and not necessary. Good. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. No, going. no. Or you can even do eg, like for example, yeah. you know, for example. That's, that's another thing. Um, so I said the ampersand. Oh, so a rule of thumb in actual physical networking to me is to never have an ask when you go up to talk to someone but to be curious about them. So that will eventually come back, but if you are on a networking Zoom call, try to be curious. And I think that's important for business going forward too, is to really show that you have some innate curiosity about things, about life, about how to change things, about how to modify, mitigate, all of that stuff. Yeah, to say. and to listen, because yeah. you're right, and to research and be curious, that should, that falls right in line with when I say, don't ask, don't say, let me know if you hear of anything. Much better to say, what's going on with you? You'll be surprised how much you find out just by asking. Um, I want to get to some questions, but I had three more very quick questions for sure. you, Danny. One is, um, do you think if someone is furloughed, they should send an email to their contacts, I've been furloughed, or here's my new email? Like, 
or maybe not because they'll go back to work. What do you think? What's the right thing to do? I guess it so depends on the situation. All right, so furloughed is different from fired, right? Right. Um, I, I don't think that I would tell people that I've been furloughed. Um, I think that it's a time to use productively and, mm -hmm. you know, do some investigating. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a new job. It may mean that you're coming back, but you need to be prepared, right? You have to mm -hmm. always be proactive in stuff like that. So I would use that time, you know, differently, definitely connect with your, you know, your, your uh, sphere of influence and, you know, learn a new skill if you have to, you know, take some YouTube classes, just really keep your mind crisp and um, inquire about other people, as you said. I, I don't think I would just announce, I mean, who hasn't been furloughed? You know, more right. people have been furloughed than not. Right, that's true. Okay, I agree. And, and it also, it makes you, you look like you're looking for sympathy and that's not what you want. No, and it also could backfire because then you <laughs> waste someone's time that they're trying to help you get something and then you go back to your job. Okay, good, I'm glad I asked that, I agree. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Danny, let's talk for a second about um, what you do, in particular with executive coaching. If someone's trying to figure out next steps for me, I help people just with resumes and job interviewing, but I'm not a coach. I don't have the, the patience, frankly, and I admire you so much for doing it, or, the, um, or that's not my expertise. So talk to us just for a second about if someone is struggling what kinds of things, what do you look for in a new client and what might they be thinking about if they think they need to? Sure. The first thing I look for in a client, it, well, a couple of things. One is, you know, how open they can be, how vulnerable they're willing to be, um, and how committed they are to cha making changes in themselves. Uh, those are really important because, you know, the way I've been trained is in with a neuroscience background and the way the brain operates is really important. So it's, it, it's like anything else where, you know, should I charge or should I not charge? Well, they need to have skin in the game to take it seriously. Mm. So I want to know that they're committed and they have to understand what the parameters are. So I work with people usually in three month um, uh, engagements and it's once a week. So, you know, there's no um, BSing around in the way I work. You know, I can be a strict coach and just ask questions and just work with key performance indicators, but that's not how I work. I work much more holistically. I want to know the whole person. I mean, if you've got an executive who's going through a divorce, they're going to show up very differently at work. And mm. it's, it's how do you, I mean, you know, also if someone's looking for a promotion, there was one guy when I was working with a private equity firm who was angling to become a managing partner. Yet when they went on their company retreats, he would close down the bar at 4 a.m. with the young associates. And I said, dude, you cannot do that. There has yeah. to be separation. So it's helping them understand and, and judging how much they want it because that will impact how much they're willing to accept. The thing about really good coaching is it depends on how much time you have and whether someone has an urgent issue, but it's not supposed to be prescriptive. I'm supposed to mirror what I hear from the client. So mm -hmm. wait, I heard this here, but then you said that, which is it? They're inconsistent. Which one do you really want to pursue? How are you going to? So, um, sorry about this. Let me see if I can... oh, <laughs> yeah, I hope you don't hear it too badly. Um, yeah, so it's it's really working with someone's own intelligence, bringing out their intelligence. I'm not there to be prescriptive because I'll just quickly give you some geeky stuff. There's something called adult learning theory. And basically what it says is you cannot make another adult see, think, you know, change anything that they're not invested in doing themselves. So the best is when the, the insight comes from the inside out. Mm, and so my job is to try to provoke the insight. And then I help people get promoted. I help them not lose their jobs. I look at the company systemically also. What's missing? Do you have a good onboarding program? Blah, blah, blah. I still like that. <clears throat> and if someone needs uh, some career counseling, like just strictly like a career coach or something like that, is there, and maybe they can't um, quite, you know, afford you and what you do, then is there like a either a particular book that you recommend? Is there these 
YouTube videos? What do you think? Is there, where, where Here's am I what do. There are a lot of people trained to be coaches. And I know that when I was in training, I had to do some actual coaching of people in my practicum part of my coaching. You can get free coaching by going to one of the universities that has a coaching program and say, you know, I'd like to volunteer to be a client. A client. That's one thing. The other thing is to get in touch with the International Coaching Federation, the ICF, which is the gold standard. They, they certify coaches. There are many people out there, make sure your coach is certified, who are just, you know, friendly helpers or give too much advice. That's not going to be enough. So a coach really should be trained. And, um, and a lot of people hang their shingles out, but they will also have lists of career coaches in your area. So career coaches generally make, a, they're more on like the personal and life coach scale of the income level. So right. you should be able to find those two ways, ICF or, you know, going to a university that has a coaching program. Okay, great. All right, let's do this. Um, we're right at our time, but I want to take some of the questions before I do. Is there, um, Danny, everyone's just on Zoom so often now for meetings and various yeah. things. Can we talk about Zoom though, in terms of someone who might be looking for a new job, particularly, what do you feel about, um, what's your feeling about, Zoom happy hours. I've been getting a lot of requests for Zoom happy hours. They're beginning to get on my nerves, but I, all, every time I do it, I love them. So what's your feeling about staying connected in that way? I think it's uh, great. It depends what you think the agenda is. If you're looking at it as a way to get a job, maybe not so much, um, unless there's a company that's hosting a Zoom happy hour to meet potential candidates. I'm not sure it's the best vetting for, for a job. I think it's a way to stay connected and, and maintain your sanity. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about a Zoom happy hour when companies run them is that they can't be compulsory because then it's part of a job. And what bosses really need to let people know is that they care about them and they understand that this is a very trying time with a lot of stress. Some people have kids at home, they're caring for a parent, uh, you know, they, it, it, it's a very stressful time for a lot of people. So if it gives you some social relief and you feel happier, then do it, happy hour. But as a, as a job uh, search method, I'm, not, I'm skeptical. Got it. Okay. All right, now questions. All right, I'm gonna rapid fire these to you sure. and I'm gonna answer these as well. Oh, this is a good one. How do you handle being furloughed on your resume? Do you write the start date of your job and then write furloughed? Um, hmm. I'll tell you what I think. Just what do you think? honesty. You yeah. have to be transparent. People will respect the transparency. If you try to bullshit your way through that, it's not gonna work. Okay. Yep. I would agree with that. That's right. Might as well. Cause they're, they're going to find out. Right. Um, this is also a good question about the layout and design of the resume. Um, are there certain layouts designs better for scanning of keywords? Ooh, that's good because I'm a big fan of not over designing. I've seen some resumes that unless you're in the creative advertising area, in which case I get it that they're going to look a different way, but if it's a normal resume, I like them to be, very clean, a good font, just like I said in my tips, um, so that when you're scanning it, I don't know that people read read so much anymore, Danny. I feel like they scan read. And so you've got to make it so that things pop out and make, make it, it. Yes, make it easy to get to yes. Um, I agree with Helvetica. It is my default. I think it's very easy to read. You want something that's, you know, not scrolly, not weird, not compressed. Make it very easy again. Um, same as the first impression, you want to make it easy to get to yes. You want to take the onus off the reader. Don't make them work too hard to find out what they need to find out, which is why I like bullets. Very clear. I like your format. You know, there are plenty of formats out there, but the idea is to keep it as easy on the eye. One thing that's also very important for those of you in graphic design or whatever, um, don't make your lines too long because the eye can only take a certain number of words in at one time. So you want to try to phrase these things in bites so the eye picks it all up. If you make them work too hard. That's right, it won't work. No, no one reads sentences anymore. That's why I, I'm a huge fan of bullet points. I think that's how people think. That's how they communicate. 
And that's what you should do on a resume. It's just but no, but no Twitter abbreviations, no LOL, no, in my humble opinion, none of that. Keep that out, but keep it right. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Someone was uh, asking about, do you recommend a resume PDF or Word doc? I always say when you send it out, do a PDF so the spacing stays intact. Danny, just for you and I, like you're working off a Mac, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm working off a PC. And I even know in our emails that the spacing as I reply is always different. So I'm always afraid that might happen with the resume, particularly if it involves bullets or columns or anything like that. You agree? Always PDF because it's, it's, it's etched in stone that way. Otherwise, someone else could make a change to it randomly if it goes as a Word doc. Yeah. So I would always do, you know, it just sort of is a, is a permanent imprint and then just keep making PDFs of whatever other versions you have. Um, the other thing about a PDF is I am, it's just a personal pet peeve when I open up a PDF and it's super large on my screen and I have to reduce it. Like that annoys me. It's just a personal thing. So take a minute. You have to be able to scroll, make sure it fits right. your, your phone, your mobile. Look at it on the phone, look at it on your computer, and then minimize it on your computer 75%. So when I open that document, I see it the way I should see it. I think that's important. And then I think, um, let's see, someone else was asking about LinkedIn, um, about connecting with people. Ooh, this is a good question is if you haven't connected with them in many years, how might you do it? It might come off a little, um, might come off a little weird if it's, I don't know. I think it shouldn't be. To use from, them, it could come across as um, fake or, yeah. you know, disingenuous is really what I want to say. Uh, you know, you have to do that. It's a case by case. It depends how close you were to the person. If it's someone you used to work with or someone you know really well, but it's just sort of lapsed. It's, hey, how, how are you doing? How are you managing during this time? Right. Uh, anything I can do to help. Yes. That's how well, I would do it. That's good. And I think, but be really sincere. I think if you start off with, you know, hope, you're, hope you and your family are safe and well. I mean, I get that a lot. I think you yeah. might want to be a little more inventive and a little more from the heart. Um, before we wrap this up, um, I want to ask you, did we, um, what did I forget to ask you? Is there something that you'd like to mention? that maybe we didn't get to? I just, I, the only thing I want to say is to put a big umbrella over this is you have to think of your resume not as something that, that is your you know, banner, but it's a marketing tool. And you have to always put yourself in the shoes of the person who's going to be reading it or the computer who's, that's going to be reading it. So you know, it, everything else fits in that. Make it easy on the eye, make it easy to read, uh, make sure the grammar is correct and the spelling. Because if I find a resume and there's, there's a spelling error, that's it, it's I over. Count it. Yeah, it's in, it's in the <clears throat> trash. You, know, you can't do that. You have to present your best face forward. And, um, you know, I think that's important. And just remember, you don't want to waste anybody's time, which will be key also in the interview. So right. we'll talk about that. And then the, I want to add to that two more extremely important things. Tell a story. What is it that you want the person that's reading this to know about you? And be sure when you do your bullet points that you put them in the order of importance to you. So for example, if you're overseeing a department and making sure that, um, you know, and you're doing publicity for their entire slate of films. Obviously that's going first. The fact that you may oversee vendors or um, work on something out that's more, that goes at the bottom of your bullets. Like it's important to emphasize it. So go back and look at the structure of it and make sure that it's telling the story that you want to tell. And also, if, I'm sorry, make sure it's telling the story that the, the, job offerer wants to wants hear. hear exactly right precisely right and then last i wanted to just say that there's some um, uh, sometimes people can ask too many people about their resumes i always say it's like weight loss tips you'll you'll get a, a million answers um and you want to just love what you have stick to it and then take people's advice with a grain of salt but don't keep changing it or reading stuff or or messing with it too much because it just, it doesn't serve you well. There's, I can tell a template resume in two seconds because it has words that I know that that person would never say. 
whether it's, you know, synergy or I yeah. increase percentages year on year, unless you're in that field, it just reeks to me of a template, a resume, and it doesn't seem like it's from you, the person. And I don't like that. Do you agree? Oh, of course. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. I agree. You know, sincere and um, yeah, I agree with you. So Completely. anyway, I'm sorry that we overstayed guys. And if we didn't get to your questions, don't worry. I have them here in the chat and then we'll send you um, a note. Hold on. We've got one more. Let me just be sure that oh, people appreciated it and said, thank you, Danny. And I just want to echo yeah. that. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate you doing it. I hope we get to do this again. Our Happy goal is time. Anytime. We want to do more and we're going to, this one's focused on resumes and then we're going to focus our, our next one on uh, job interviewing skills.